All right, so back to NMS ordination. Um, we're going to use an example from community ecology because this class is focused on ecology. Um, in this case, you, a lot of programs will ask you to have your data organized into what's called a main matrix with all of your species abundance data and a second matrix with all the environmental data that you might have about the plot. So maybe you're comparing, like I said, you know, natural versus man-made wetlands. So natural versus man-made, that would be a categorical variable in your environmental data. But maybe you also have like, the depth of the water, you have the temperature of the water, you might have the size of the wetland, you might have the distance between the wetland and some natural area. So all of those kinds of var variables would be in your environmental data set. But, you know, pretend that you're instead you're interested in a suite of chemical traits in some kind of sample. And so in your main matrix, you'd have all of the different chemicals that you measured. And in your second matrix, maybe, maybe you're looking at soil chemistry. So then you have where did the soil come from? What was the latitude? What was the depth in the ground? Um, how moist was it? You know, like all kinds of information about the soil that you're studying or the leaf chemistry or whatever. This, this tool is very applicable. Um, and maybe you're doing something with social science. And so your main matrix might be a whole bunch of survey responses. What do people think about a bunch of things? And then your second matrix would be the characteristics of those people. What is their gender identity? What is their um, cultural identity? What is their income bracket? Where do they live? Those kinds of things. So it's so gonna be thinking about the main matrix and the second matrix um, in terms of, uh, of community data. All right, so here's a brief introduction to ordination. Because all community data is multivariate, okay, we're dealing with multivariate mathematics, which is super complicated. We're not going to go into the details of it. Um, but we're dealing with data sets that have many, many Y variables. This means that they're multidimensional. Okay? And in fact, your data set is as dimensional as the number of species you have which can kind of blow your mind. So ordination is goal is to condense complicated data down to just a few dimensions for visual inspection and analysis. Okay, so a key point, multivariate data sets have many Ys measured for the same experimental unit. Um, the Ys then are not necessarily independent variables, so we can't use parametric methods. Um, because most parametric statistics require independence, right? Um, okay, so here's an example of an ordination. And basically, this is a data set. There are 85 species in this data set. All, all of the species are um, aquatic macroinvertebrates. And basically, what we did is we took an 85-dimensional data set and we smashed it down to two dimensions. Now these two dimensions are represented as axis, in this case, axis two and three, okay? And each symbol in on this ordination, each symbol represents the entire community in that um, sample. So if this is macroinvertebrates, you know, there's like hundreds of organisms that make up this community, okay? now. The closer these symbols are to, to one another in space, the more similar their communities. So these two circles that are linked right here have very similar communities. Um, the further symbols are apart in space, the more different their communities are. And so what's neat about ordination is that it takes this 85-dimensional community data set, smashes it down into two dimensions, and then shows you how similar the communities are based on their spatial separation. And so you can see there's a really neat grouping down here of gray boxes. There's kind of like a big stripe of black triangles in the middle and then all these little circles at the top, okay? So ordination reduced the, the dimensionality of this data set down into two dimensions so we can see these groupings better. And we could start like by drawing these, these kind of ellipses or circles around the groupings that we see. And then, because ordination is just a pretty picture of the differences in the communities um, among groups, and we could run some kind of a test. In this case, I ran what's called an MRPP, and it was significant. So the null hypothesis for an ordination 
and its associated statistic is that all communities are the same. And in this case, we could say, no, actually, we reject that null hypothesis. Not all communities are the same. Now, we'd have to do some follow-up work, just like with a two keys on a significant difference to see whether you know, the blue circle and the red circle are actually different from one another, but it sure looks like the orange circle and the blue circle are different from one another, right? Okay. So that's kind of what ordination does. It gives you this cool picture and then some statistics that go with it to test the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, all communities are the same. But how does it work? Basically, ordination takes every pair of samples in your data set and calculates a similarity value. And um, there's a number of different similarity indices that, that can use, but think about it. I like to think about it kind of like um, the distance between two cities and how um, you could calculate the distances between two cities. And um, maybe this isn't a valid reference anymore, but you used to be able to look in, a, in an atlas, like a, a road atlas. And there was like a table in the back that told you like how far between New York and Los Angeles and how far between New York and Washington DC is much closer, right? And how far between New York and Portland, Maine is even closer. And it was this distance matrix that showed you how far apart different cities in the United States were. So I think about that myself, but maybe that doesn't work for some of you. So the ordination plots the samples in ordination space to represent the similarity among the communities. And it does this many times. It spits them out and it says, how did that work? And then it does it again. It spits them out and says, how does this work? So it's doing it many, many times, kind of like the resampling stats t-test that I showed you. And it's determining whether there are good groupings that exist in the data. Okay, so these distance measures, I'm just going to talk about two of them, but there are a whole bunch of distance measures that you might decide to use in different circumstances. So the first one is called a Euclidean distance, and it's basically just a key dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem, meaning that uh, the Pythagorean theorem works in two dimensions to be the hypotenuse, the distance between two points, but in p dimensions, that becomes a little bit more complicated, right? So um, it turns out that these Euclidean distances work really well for environmental data or chemical data or genetic data, but they don't work so great for ecological data. So instead, for most ecology questions and community analysis, we're going to use what's called Sorensen's or the Bray-Curtis distance measure. And this is a distance measure that's measured as a city block. So instead of measuring the hypotenuse between two points, it measures the down and over distance. For some reason, you can read about it in this paper, Faith et al. from 1987, if you're really interested. For some reason, um, it, it works better for ecological data. And you can have your data either in terms of the abundance and numbers of organisms or their presence or absence in your community. So here's an example similarity matrix. You have three samples. Sample one and sample one, of course, are perfectly similar to one another. Sample one and sample two have a 0.78 similarity, and sample one and sample three have a 0.56 similarity. But then you look over here, okay, oh, and there's another one we need to talk about because sample two and sample three have a 0.21 similarity. So it turns out the least similar to one another are two and three, and the most similar to one another are one and two. Okay, so this is how the similarity matrix works. And you can see that the information is the same on the top of the rectangle kind of triangular if you use the ones as a, a diagonal line the values are the same on the top and the bottom so you really only need half of this um, matrix to understand the system okay so let's get back to this community data set you have either a community matrix um, with species in your columns or you have an environment, an environmental matrix where you have these other factors, things that you measured about your plots. And those would also go in columns in your data set. Some, more, some important things about data set issues. One, um, you have to have the two different matrices. Um, actually, in R, we're going to combine them. No, no, sorry. In R, we're not going to combine them. In past, we're going to combine them. But in R, they need to be separate. Um, some programs want them separate, some want them together. So you really just need to know what kind of program you're working with. Um, it, most 
programs won't allow either an entire column of zeros or an entire row of zeros. So if you go to a plot and there's nothing there, then you can't have just zeros all the way across. You might, you have to maybe make a new column that says nothing and give it a one for that uh, column. And all of your empty cells must be labeled as zero. So again, here's an ordination. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about non-metric multidimensional scaling ordination. There are lots of different kinds of ordination. We're just going to focus on this one because it's used commonly in ecology. It's well suited to non-normal data. A lot of um, species are distributed non-normally across the landscape. It is banked on, based on rank distances, um, which you don't really need to understand, but um, it helps in terms of the, uh, the kind of non-parametric approach. Um, and it does this kind of iterative search for placing samples in k dimensions, however many axes you want, you know, usually two or three is best. And it minimizes the stress of the configuration. I'm going to talk a little bit more about stress. So stress is a measure of how well the dissimilarity or similarity of the original data matrix is represented by this new uh, k dimensional solution where k is usually one through four, right? We can we can see one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions. We can't really visualize four dimensions well, so we usually use a two or a three dimensional solution just because that's what we're going to be able to see best. Now imagine original data matrix as P equals the number of species dimensions, so like 85 for example, right? And you're going to take 85 dimensions and you're going to smash it down into two dimensions. That's super stressful. Imagine an orange, right? You have an orange, it's a three-dimensional object, and I want to take a three-dimensional object and smash it down to two dimensions. That's pretty stressful on the orange, right? So it's really stressful to take 85 dimensions and smash that down into two or three. And so we want to make sure that we're not losing too much information as we do that kind of um, condensation. Okay, so the goal of ordination is to place objects either close or far apart in ordination space based on the distance between their, like the distance between how similar their communities are. Um, what's cool about NMS ordination is it can use any distance measure, so we'll ask it to use a Bray Curtis distance measure. Um, and again, it's based on this rank order of the original distances. Um, so there's a little bit of loss of data there, but not too bad and it's a permutative process. I feel like I'm repeating myself. Okay, so there are fewer assumptions required for ordination and NMS ordination than some other kinds of ordination that you might have heard of, like principal components analysis ordination, um, canonical correspondence ordination, polar ordination, lots of different kinds of ordination out there. Okay, so some of the advantages and disadvantages of ordination is that it's useful, it can reduce complex data sets, it's very powerful, um, it's included in some stats packages. Um, JUMP does PCA ordination, but not NMS. Um, some of the disadvantages is that it's mathematically complicated, it's based on matrix algebra, the scores are sometimes different to, difficult to interpret, and some of the assumptions and mechanics are hidden inside the stats packages, as you will see. Okay. So um, ordination basics, this is a two-dimensional solution that shows nice groupings across three different streams. Um, ordination is a nice way to visualize these differences among communities. And in this case, the differences are easy to see, but we would still want to run some statistics to go with the graph. So the next uh, lecture, we'll talk about the statistics that you might be interested in running.